You know, I have a question that I learned a long time ago that I have to keep reapplying to my own life. So maybe this fits for you too. But it's a question for men, and maybe I'll think of a question, or the Lord will give me one for the women, but just for men for a moment. And ladies, I hope that they're paying attention. But guys especially pastors or elders or deacons or or whoever it may be if you're a man of god when's the last time you cleaned the toilet i mean think about it for a minute when's the last time that you got down in front of that toilet and went underneath the bowl inside the bowl back behind the sides you know all the places around the floor that you don't want to talk about when's the last time you cleaned it how often do you clean it? You see, the question the Lord has for you is, are you serving or are you being served? A lot of times I think that many men of God like to be served and they get comfortable with it where they just assume that it gets done because they have a deacon or they have a, a person that volunteered to go and do janitorial but you know Jesus didn't do that did he he said that if you wanted to be great in his kingdom you would be the janitor of all so to speak that you would be the servant of all that you would be the one ministering to others for their personal need because as he said he didn't come as one to be served but he came as one to serve and modern fundamentalist Christianity likes to pretend that somehow giving the Bible or giving a teaching is serving. That's not serving. That's elevating yourself and promoting the position of authority to do something that anyone could do. I mean, literally, because the Holy Spirit is the one who's giving the message. It's really not the person that's being used. But... How often are you, as a husband, or a man, or a roommate, and let's get real, you know, you're probably a lot of people, you know, because unfortunately, you know, even though it's Christian, a lot of people are living together in sin, you know, that's wrong, but if you're living together, how often are you cleaning the toilet? Are you taking care of the practical things that need to be done in your world? Are you cleaning up after yourself, much less after others? Because you see, it's easy, sort of, to clean up after yourself, but are you taking care of others that way too? Because that's really what God is trying to bring about in us, is a spiritual cleansing that he wants us not just to apply it spiritually, he wants us to do it practically. Because James is a very practical book, and. James will let you know pretty clearly, you know, where you stand as far as God is concerned. And First uh, John kind of reminds you that, hey, you know, if God is in you, then are you doing what Jesus would do or are you doing what you do? Which is to kind of like stand back and wait and see if someone else will volunteer to do it. You see, I always heard, like when I was in ministry, often this huge cry out for, oh, we need Sunday school teachers. And I always kept thinking, you know, pastor, why don't you just stop the service and put someone else in charge and you go down and teach Sunday school? Because, frankly, if you're so good with adults, why not teach the children? And put someone else in charge and then maybe the message gets across that it isn't so much about being ministered to, but ministering to others. And so you see, getting your house in order will get your mind in order. As you practically do things, then God will speak to you while you're doing them. Because if you're cleaning a toilet, you'll begin to think about, to put it bluntly, for men, missing the mark. Because suddenly, you'll understand what sin is. And you'll realize that missing the mark, you know, in a very dramatic way, will make you realize that there's something more to what God is showing you than just simply a demonstration in some practical reality. You need to drive it home to yourself in a very personal way. Because after all, if you're doing your own toilet at home, 
then you know what's going on in the situation and the circumstances. And you're not going to suddenly scream at your children and tell them to come in here and clean the bathroom because you're the one doing it. So you see, taking accountability and responsibility in a practical way will also do that emotionally because then you'll begin to coordinate in your own life the things that God wants for you. And you'll begin to take stock spiritually too and begin to do those things that apply to your life as it may be reality check in your world as it comes home to you even in the little things and after all we all use the restroom don't we or do you a good question i have is that i know that in public restrooms there's always a sign you know that's very obvious wash your hands there's always people that you know because you're in the restroom that don't and they run right out and take responsibility for what? Possibly causing someone else to become ill from their lack of self-discipline, from their lack of personal hygiene. So how's your spiritual hygiene? Have you run off to go do your ministry today without reading the word for yourself? I do. A lot of times I'll do these devotionals and I'll get my devotional out of doing the devotional rather than spending time alone with God first and then coming to share. So God has been working on me in my personal spiritual hygiene because my physical hygiene he takes care of and he reminds me to do these things by way of practical demonstrations of speaking to me while I'm doing them. Because one of the clearest places I ever hear God speak to me is in the bathroom, usually in the bathtub. But today when I was cleaning the toilet, the Lord said, Hey, go ask people, when's the last time you cleaned the toilet? Think about it. No unemployment. The way of conquest over the material, the temporal, which all my disciples should know, is learned by the conquest of the physical, the self-life in each of you. So seek in all things to conquer. Take this as a very definite guidance. A direct word. Circumstances are adverse. Temporal power, as money, needs to be forthcoming. Then seek daily more and more to obtain this self-conquest and self-discipline. And you are gaining surely, though you may not see it, conquest over the temporal forces and powers of which you need. Unemployment would cease if man realizes. If he has not the work to let him make himself a conquering force, beginning with the conquest of all evil in himself, then in his home, then in all around him. In other words, it must begin in yourself in order for it to extend outward. He will have become a force that will be needed and must be employed, and he will be sought out. There are no idle hours in my kingdom. Waiting may seem a time of that inactivity as far as the outer world is concerned, but it can and should be a time of great activity in the inner life and the surrounding material plane. In other words, it's true that there's a majority of people that are unemployed or underemployed or whatever it may be. But the one employment that God always has is to deploy you in a particular practical way for the things that need to be done today. You know what they are. They can be as simple as cleaning the bathtub ring. <laughs> Cleaning the toilet, washing the dishes, doing those things in a way as unto the Lord that you begin to hear the Lord speak to you in them as you do them. Because then as you're doing that practical, you'll be getting a spiritual truth as he uses that to maybe not just wash the plates, but wash your mind, to wash your attitudes about other people and about things that maybe your self-discipline is slipping, as sometimes mine does. So turn to the Lord today and try this, just as an experiment, because women already know this one. Try going in the bathroom and cleaning up the toilet today and see if God doesn't speak to you in some way. Hmm. I'm sure this is shocking for you, 
But you know what? God just might need you there today. Don't be surprised.